Anyway, everyone, Protogram here, and today we're going to do something a little different. Uh, I am a avid Kickstarter addict, and uh, one of the games that just came in for me is Kingdom Death, and so we're going to do an unboxing for that today. So, really excited to, it, to do it, and uh, yeah, let's see where I go. Alright, so here's the box. It's pretty hefty in size. I'd say it's about what, two, you know, over two feet long, maybe. Uh, it's got a nice matte finish. It's this little embossed thing. Kingdom Death Monster on the side here. Um, it's a nice onyx obelisk for all of your gaming terrors. Nightmares you want to rot onto your gaming groups. The first thing you see when you open up your Kingdom Death box is going to be this box on top of it called Miniature Assembly. It has all of the miniature stuff in it that um, you know you'll, comes with a core set. I'll open that right here. And it is amazing. There's tons of stuff in here. This, it all looks super high detail. And as you can probably see right here, this is part of the Phoenix. Uh, I don't know if you can see. Let's see if we can get a little bit of focus on here. But there's a lot of like plumage in here and you can see really nice detail on all this stuff. There's the phoenix part. There, the first sprue that you uh, encounter is called the prologue sprue and I don't have that here because I already put it together uh, and I'll show you showing off those guys in a little bit. I just ran my first game with it over the weekend and that's why I don't have it. It was a lot of fun though uh, but, I'll, and, but we do have other stuff in here. Um, What's this? This is the King's Man Sprue. There's one of the uh, special story event monsters in there. Um, there's one for each armor set entirely. For example, this is one of the sprues for the Phoenix kit. And so you got like, you know, the nice Phoenix armor legs and uh, it's Phoenix axes and a little plumage over here. A little nice shields. Uh, I believe there's a, a second sprue in here somewhere. Yes. So right here is the uh, sp second sprue. And you can see that you know you have your nice phoenix headdresses and kind of spartan hell caps over here. Uh, one of the things I find really surprising about this game is that the since everything is interchangeable, uh, you get these really small guys here for like the hands. I don't know if you can see them. Uh, yeah, but there's hands right there, um, and then arm pieces right here, and, uh, you know, your chest pieces right here. So it's a lot of, like, really tiny pieces, you know, to put together, whereas when I first started the, back the campaign, I, you know, we were, there's a lot of talks on the forums about people using little magnets to kind of make, you know, stick their figures together without gluing them so they can, you know, then interchange the other pieces back on later. And I'm not sure if that's still something that's entirely out. Maybe you can put core pieces together, like a whole arm with a hand on it, and then uh, maybe at the, at the joint of that, maybe have a magnet for the rest of the body. But I don't know. Um, we'll find out with that as we go. You find there's some monsters to look at. Um, I don't have the lion because that's part of the prologue, but here's one for the was a screaming antelope? Yeah. But yeah, there's the antelope right there. The other side of them there. He's got a big tuft of thing, a frick tail there. Um, there's a couple of the secret things Poots put on here for us. I'm not really sure what those look like yet. Um, but I am having fun putting this all together. Uh, there's that guy. I'll, let's get a closer look at the... Oh, here's the Watcher. This is the watch, or I think it's one of the Watcher sprues, or maybe this is the whole thing. I don't know. But very flowy capes. Lots of little, you know, pieces of cloth coming off of them. A bunch of little lanterns. Um, there's his head right there. And I haven't really looked at it too in depth, but this Phoenix guy looks freaking huge to put together. 
just going off of how big these are three sprues and there's you know two of the wings right there and then there's like the back part of them and there's the hands um, like the log here uh, one thing that uh, a friend of mine already put him together and was commenting on the fact there's all these little hands right here and, and these all go on the phoenix somewhere so on the wings or wherever because you can kind of see some of them already on here uh, let's close that again to get a little bit of view on here so some of the hands are already part of the the, uh, the pieces but in other places um, and I'll show you on the wing here on the wing here you have like these little divots along the edge where apparently some hands go and there's enough of those little divots that you know there's there's a spot for every one of them here's some more here's another view of this one there's some more divots on there and uh, here's this massive like you know crooked claws with long fingers um, the one thing I didn't notice about this before was the uh, the head. Yeah. So inside the mouth, which is right here, here's the mouth bits. Uh, there's actually like a head of a person in there, which I think that's what these are. And then that's that's where the big long kind of mustachey things you saw uh, in the in the pictures were. And oh, here they are right here. Yeah, so like there's these big long like things coming out of them that was coming off the mouth. It looked like the phoenix had its like super long mustache or whatever, but in fact there's a little bit of a old man head in there as well. And so I'm really interested to put this thing together, but it might be a little bit because I'm trying. I'm still working through the prologue stuff to paint that up and get that look good. But that's the core set uh, miniature assembly box that comes in the top of it, uh, and now we'll get into the actual game parts of it. Here's the inside of the box. Um, it has a nice double-sided uh, a nice settlement track. All the steps labeled on here from one to whatever. It includes innovation deck spot, some principles. I don't know what those are yet. Um, so uh, areas for innovations and settlement locations. And then on the other side of it is a nice hunt track for when you actually go and hunt down a prey. And if you go too far without getting it, I suppose you starve and die. Uh, the next thing that comes in the box here is um, this, I guess, monster manager uh, track sheet where you have you know the different AI, um, different hit locations. Uh, and then there are corresponding discards, there's basic actions and wounds. So as you damage the guy, the AI, as you damage the monster, you take out AI cards, you put them into the wounds. Um, and then over here, uh, we have little modifier, little token slots for like effect modifiers, maybe some traits and moods that are in. Uh, I'm not sure about those yet because I haven't gotten to them yet. We just played the prologue mission. Uh, so we haven't gotten too in depth with it. The next piece is it's in the box is this big game board. It is a trifold game board, which makes it incredibly large. Um, I'm not really sure. Well, I mean, I understand why you want to have a big game board, but um, it's. It's a little larger than I would like, but it's still super high detail on here. I love the art, um, and you know when you're in an encounter, you want to have like having more space is always a good thing, because especially given some of these monsters are just you don't want to be near them. <laughs> um, in the game we played, we had the monster start in the middle. I don't know if that's the case in all of them, and then we started a certain number of squares away from it. Um, the one. 
I guess, mistake we made is we started all in different directions. So as soon as he went in one direction, we all had to waste a turn getting there. So it might be worthwhile to kind of, you know, start closer together when you're playing, um, just so you can get, you know, more hits in quicker. Um, it does have a nice, on the edge here, I don't know if you can see it, there's like little, there's numbers along the top and then letters uh, down the side here. Um, so it goes A to P, probably for poots, and then 1 to 22 over here. And one of the first things you notice here is that there's a character sheet, it's got the name there, and uh, you got hunt XP, you got some survival bonuses and stats and attributes, and then other fighting arts and special things over here. Um, pretty nice little, you know, concise little character sheet. Every character sheet gets one, or every survivor gets one as you make them, and so uh, you'll have several of these for your population as you start using your survivors. And, you know, they have little armor slots. This is the armor values that go in here, as well as, like, light or heavy injuries. If you start getting into these, that means you're probably in trouble. Um, and then it tells you what happens if you get heavy injuries in any of these slots here. So that's that. The next thing you come across is the uh, survival. The survival, or I'm sorry, the um, settlement name or settlement sheet. You have a pretty big um, sheet here with with lots of val values and attributes, and it has lots of um, information. It comes with you can. Or settlement sheet, uh, you have a settlement name, and then you get bonuses for naming it. I like that, that you actually get bonuses for naming things. It makes people, you know, want to, it makes people engage a little bit more, I think. Uh, you have a death count over there in the corner here, uh, some story events here for, you know, any milestone or big events that happen. Um, over here you have pretty much your timeline or your track record. You count things off uh, in lantern years. As you can see, you have pretty con consistent events all the way up to, uh, what's that, 25? And then uh, I think that's when the normal campaign ends, and you can choose to continue on after that if you want, and maybe even beyond this as well. Um, you have, you know, settlement locations over here. You have innovations, principles, and then you have a nice list of, like, possible monsters you can go get. And... Uh, there's that. That's the front. They actually have a back of the sheet as well. I'll show that here where you actually get into... Um, you can have storage where you can like store all your unused items right here. Um, you can have a... you have a defeated monsters section where it talks about all of your monsters that you've taught. You know, you can show off all the monsters you defeated. That's kind of like a trophy section. And then at the bottom you have population, oops, you have a population and uh, lost settlement track, I'm not sure what that does yet, but your population here is pretty important because as you, um, as you play, some guys, as you can imagine, will die and you'll need to be, you'll need to make a new settler uh, or survivor for the next time you go out, uh, so there's that. Next in the box you come across these uh, gear sheets, there's four of them. Uh, there is variant rules for five and six players, but you only still have four of these sheets. So maybe making an extra one will uh, be useful <clears throat> for that. Um, you have a little bit of basic information over here of what these symbols mean. Uh, if I can see them. So there's like a move and an activation. There's different symbols for that. Um, you can spend stuff to do. Like it tells you what to spend them on and do things. There's survival actions breakdown, which is really nice and useful. And then right here it shows you like your unarmed combat, which is like your always go-to, if nothing else, uh, attack move. And you got these nine squares here that um, you got these nine squares here that you can kind of organize your gear in any way you want. Uh, as you gain more gear, you can kind of move them around and we'll maybe link up uh, similar colored items in order to gain bonuses, or you know just put whatever you want on here. It's really neat little. Uh, inventory system. Uh, I actually had a lot of fun with it when I was playing. Trying to, f I didn't really have any good items or anything, so I was just moving them around. Like, ooh, I can move them, yay! 
But I like that you can use this whole space to move out around your items and, uh, you know, place your gear wherever you want. Uh, the next thing here is going to be a the instruction book. Uh, you can see I got my bookmarks in here. I was playing over, I was playing the the, the prologue campaign recently and had a lot of fun with it. Um, but uh, you know, you have oops. Um, goes over how to play. A lot of great art. It actually has a really neat little story at the beginning. Um, with like little blurbs on each page. The art is really well done in this. I'm not going to show you guys the whole thing because it's worth reading and looking at and having a lot of like experiencing for yourself. Um, and then it gets you in the first story where it talks about how to set things up, assembling your starter, what miniatures you'll need to start with. Um, here's a run through after all the stuff. There's the tokens, which we'll get into in a little bit. Um, you know, setting up your initial stats and attributes. Uh, setting up the monster, it actually shows you the first story, White Lion here. It has a special attack deck uh, and hit locations you got to set up right here. And then here's the different cards you're going to be using as you play through the prologue. Um, and it shows you that, you know, board set up, the monster starts in the middle, you have to be six squares away, and that's cardinal directions. So you have to go one, two, three, four, five, you know. You can't do diagonal one, two, three, unfortunately. Which, you know, people it can go either way. Uh, it gets into the final, like the actual showdown and talks about like the monster's viewing arc and, you know, scents and blind spots and all that fun stuff. Uh, this talks about more uh, into in effects of like moving and attacking, uh, different effects that get triggered, um, things like that. Stick. What's that doing? Uh, this talks about, you know, the survivor's turn. So the monster goes, and then all the survivors go. And the monster goes, all the stars go, and so on. Uh, you can move, you can attack. When you hit shoot, when you hit the monster, you get the roll to see if you can crit on him or things like that. And then finally, once you, assuming that uh, you, some of you make it, uh, you get a nice survivors are victorious page. Sorry, there's a glare. I'm trying to cover. Survivors are victorious page, and that gets into... Um, after here, you start talking about how to make your first settlement, uh, and that's I'm not going to get into that right now. But you have it. But it's a, it's a really neat little kind of walkthrough process. There's my sheet for my settlement there. It's a nice bit of a walkthrough to kind of get you interest in in introduced to the game, and then uh, after that initial section, it goes into um, all the rules again to kind of reiterate here's this rule here's this rule here's this rule and so on um it's actually a really well organized book there's a couple of spots where we had to flip through uh to different sections to kind of look at stuff which i wasn't a huge you know it was a little bit annoying but you know it's i'm not i'm also new to it so i don't know if there's just a better source that i can reference later on but that's the art book really well done um and it's got you know tons and tons of art and things to look at and awesome little encounters and you know I'm not going to show all of them off here but super super high quality put in like a lot of effort was put in this book very clearly now we'll get into the uh, main box so this is the main box that comes with uh, you know the rest of it the rest of the box that comes with the game uh, you have a ton of cards of regular playing size cards as well as these uh, quarter or like little tiny card bits um, right here as well as tons of other stuff in here um, a lot of these cards are things like your monster bosses like these big sections here your monster or your boss monsters um, some of them some other things are also uh, you know starting or basic resources right strange resources um, different traits uh, vermin you know, weapon masteries and things like that. And, uh, yeah. And then you have, you know, like you said, you have a section for each of the bosses here. Um, so we'll, we'll show, I'll show off real quick what the white lion one is because that's what the one we did. Oops. That's the wrong one. 
That was the antelope. I don't want that one. I want the white lion. The white lion! That's what I want. Totally, for the whole time. Anyways. You get a pretty much a pretty hefty deck of things specific for the white lion. Uh, the first card. So the first card you have is a setup where it talks about, here's the starting, here's the prologue, white lion, and then level one, two, three. They have different stats for, depending on how difficult you want it to be. Um, and then it has an instinct at the bottom that does stuff, whatever, for each monster, I assume. Uh, and then you have the basic action on the other side that says, you know, this is the mon this is the basic thing the monster can do when you know when he can't do anything else. We'll get into all that in a second. Uh, the big the big pile of cards has a um, has a couple different card sections. You have the main one here is AI. Uh, it's pretty. You know, there's plenty of AI cards in here. It's in the middle of hit locations because they have it set up for something right now. But you have several AI cards that they... That's the monsters. That represents the monster's actions that he can do, uh, as well as his hit point total. Uh, you have hit locations. that They also say, you know, what one they go to. So hit location, white lion, AI, white lion. It makes it for a very easy organization, as well as um, tracking. Uh and record keeping as well. And so hit locations, you know, they can, they have, they look like this, where they have, uh, you know, you, you roll to, like when you hit a lion, or when you hit a monster, you have to pick a hit location, and then roll against this toughness to see if you can actually uh, do damage to it. And so in this case, if you, if you roll and you don't meet its toughness, there's a failure section here, and then there's usually a critical wound here. Now, uh, not every section has a failure section, so I guess that just means that nothing bad happens. Uh, in some cases, uh, there's reactionary things that can happen, as well as other bad things in general. Um, so that's those. The next thing we have here is hunt events. Hunt, and this is the white lion specifically. They have also have their nice little icon of the monster right there, which is really awesome. Uh, and these are when you go hunting on that hunt track that, we, that I showed off earlier. You lay it out, and then in, in the book somewhere it shows you, here's where you put the, the monster-specific hunt events and then typically in the gaps or the open spaces you put basic hunt events and there's a basic hunt event section in here somewhere so it's those uh, and then finally we have the resources each each monster comes with its own resource deck and then they're, they're, they're marked by resource their yellow cards their lion and it says white lion right there and when you draw from the resource deck you get things specific to the lion like lion claw or white fur, or great cat bones, things like that. Really cool detail um, to it. I'm not sure if there's anything that's specific to um, making that, because they all have like a subcategory they go into. Like for example, lion claw goes into bone. Um, there's another bone or sinew as an organ. So again, I'm I'm I just got through the first. Um, the first encounter, so I'm not sure what all there is to offer in here. I don't know how to get to the other, to the specific armor sets yet, but uh, you know, I'll report back on that as I continue finding out. Mm. Let's put that guy back in. Alright, and then over here we have our Woo. show off. Move the camera over a little bit. Over here we have our uh, gear cards. So every 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 settlement location you come up, come, can build, there's a different. Uh, it has its own gear that you can make. So for example, uh, and they come with little separators, uh, and that's the same for. Um, that's the same for these guys as well. You get a stack of separators that talks about. It shows off uh, each of the little ones. So, for example, here's the Screaming Antelope, and it shows off all the AI cards it has, the hit locations, the resources, and the hunt events in there. And it's single side, but it's a really nice little kind of way to to um, to make sure you have everything, and it's great for record keeping. Uh, in this case, there's an organ grinder. We'll show off a little bit. And 
In the organ grinder, they have different items you can make, including monster grease. It has a little green thing here, which I'll get into in a second. Uh, there's a monster necklace, some lucky charms, uh, and then a dried, what is that? Acanthus? Whatever. Anyways, the nice thing about the item in this is that these go on your, when you make an item, you give it to Survivor, and it goes on that gear card. And, um, if you can, if you see this green thing here, it has, um, if you can find another item that has a green piece here and complete it, it counts as one completed green square. And you see at the bottom here that if you get three uh, completed green squares, you get an extra bonus. So that's kind of a nice way of doing items in this game. I'm really interested in exploring the different combinations of things that you can get as I progress. Again, I'm only on the, I only finished the first uh, encounter, so I'm not sure what else is out there to offer. Um, but you see the Lucky Charm here is another one. Uh, it doesn't give you anything initially, but if you can complete two, uh, right here it says if you can complete two blue squares, you get another little bonus out of it. And it actually gives you, you know, starting points for the little bonus. The bonus is right there. And that's just that one. Uh, there's one for every settlement location in here, which is really impressive. And they go in these little, you can see them in these little, like, uh, you know, slotted off uh, sections in this inlay here. Now, there's ones for these cards here, but I'm not using them because it has this section here that it really nicely fits um, the book. So that's why I'm not using that right now. Uh, ooh. character sheets. There's, that's why I'm not really using that right now, uh, because I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be using this, and if I do, where else can the book go, because these cards are all a little bit above, you know, the, uh, the layer, like this layer here. These guys are obviously higher than that, so I'm not sure what the thing behind that was, but I'm using this right now as, like, where I keep all of those settlements and books and all that stuff. Uh, here we have all of our tokens. We got a bunch of square tokens here. There's, there's one there. Uh, then, because these these all came from uh, two big uh, cardboard sheet uh, punch outs. So here's the one for a bunch of the square pieces here. Uh, and then there's one as well for the for these round tokens and these little blood drops here and these guys right here as well. Uh, and these are all for like different stats and attributes. So for example. Uh, there's different modifiers you gain throughout the game uh, where you can get like uh, plus one damage and then the opposite sides has the minus one damage and there's tokens in here for you know for every of every one of the attributes there's luck toughness uh, speed you know and so on uh, you get some dice you get you get uh, one two three four five black dice and a white one white dice. These are all D10s, and then on the they're really nice because on the 10 spot you get the whoo, lantern, and then you also get four hit location dice that uh, show off the different body parts of when you get hit. There's a head piece right there, and then hands right there. Um, you have these little blood tokens. I'm not really sure what these do yet. Uh, I haven't encountered them, but we'll find out. And yeah, um, one of the cool, one of my favorite things you get in this game is called this little monster controller guy. Uh, this is a player gets this card when they start in their showdown, and the player gets to control the monster's actions. And generally, you want that monster to do the best of its ability because it's well, otherwise you know, why bother? You want the game to be tough. You want it to be challenging. You know, when you're a player, you get to do this. Why not make it as entertaining as possible? The nice bon the nice incentive here is that if you attack yourself, your own character, you get a little bit of insanity here. And that's, essentially, that's like mental armor, uh, because this fight that you're in is so outlandishly horrific that you would have to be insane to continue fighting. So it's a pretty nice little way of justifying that. 
Um, after your first showdown, you, you you make a settlement. You get to do uh, settlement events. I'm only going to show off the first day here, but you get a whole stack of them. Um, so uh, it looks like that there's, I don't know, some of these I think are triggered. Some of these are, could be random, um, but in general for the first one. So yeah, this one is the first day. It's got a nice little bit of art up here. Um, it's a settlement event, and that tells you kind of initial stuff that you go. You read from the top to the bottom. You know, it tells you that you, you, you guys walk through the black, blah, blah, blah. You guys find, you find, you know, you find this little lantern horn. You know that you're safe there. Roll 1d10 to find out how many people, you know, gather. And then, of course, in my game, I rolled the minimum, which was 1 to 3. So I only have 6 people plus my survivors. And then here it tells you start updating the death count. Uh, and then to remove this first day settlement card from the game. Uh, the next thing we got here is the sell actual settlement locations. So when you first start your settlement, you get the Lantern Horde settlement location. Uh, it's got a nice little awesome, again, art at the top. The whole, the, whole, the whole game is just strewn with really good looking art. Uh, and then it shows you what you can use to innovate. You can, you can initially, you can do innovations by the base location, and then down here it shows you what you can also build. Uh, and it shows you this little symbol right here. So you get this little guy right here called this Endeavor. Pretty much any returning survivors get Endeavor points, um, and you can use them to spend on different things. But in your first Lantern Horde, your first mission successful, you get one per every returning survivor that you can use to build buildings or do an innovation. Uh, typically the book recommends building these first three buildings uh, when you can as quickly as possible because they open up you know things like building armor building those organ grinder items i showed you a little bit earlier uh, and then also a bone smith where you can build some starting weapons and there's no extra cost to building these as you can see but they do cost an endeavor right here without getting into all of them i'll show off the uh, skinnery. So another skinnery. This is a nice little piece of art up here. You got a little bit of look to what this looks like. And then, um, you know, you got you got a list of all the items this guy can make, as well as some utility items and things down here. Uh, it also shows you the cost of those items right here. So when you, as you complete monsters, you gain resources. Remember how I showed you the the lion fur, the lion claws, or whatever. Uh, some of those fall into the hide category here that you can make, uh, and you can then make the subs the corresponding item. Uh, some items initially are locked, like the drum and the whip, because you need to have the specific uh, innovation for drums and ammonia uh, subsequently to unlock those items. And then if you wanted to make a leather worker, you can spend that endeavor to build it, but it also costs a little bit of extra resources over here to do. I like how that shows the items uh, right here and like the color, uh, the corresponding color squares. So you can kind of plan out what kind of, you know, character uh, gear you want to have. And maybe you want the rawhide vest and then maybe so you can plan ahead to get the gloves and headband. Or maybe you have another item that's a, a, a chess piece that the blue from the headband can lock into, you know, different planning different things like that uh, so I like that and these these are pretty nice little cards too it's got they all mostly have a nice matte finish to them they feel pretty high quality um, there's the thickness of them so it's not super flimsy either but I won't get into the other settlement events because I mean you know at the end of the day play the game have a lot of fun with it because it is a lot of fun um, finally, we have all of these little, more of these cardboard cutouts. There's some stone faces there. Um, there's varying sizes of them. So there's a big tree. Uh, you get a couple thin, long, pillar-looking things. Uh, I haven't gotten far enough in the game to, to know what those do yet, but uh, I'll report back when I can to, to, to tell you. So one of the things that we do, we get you get to have as part of a settlement is called... Uh, it's, it's called innovations, and what those are is essentially like tech advances in your settlement. So you st when you start a settlement and you beat the first lion, uh, you start with 
uh, language. And then from there, you it tells you add all of the language consequence cards into the innovation deck. And that's depicted up here at the top uh, where it says language consequence. So now uh, I have drums in there as well as symposium and other things. Uh, and that is useful because now uh, if I want to innovate, like I showed you, on, if I ever want to do, you know, innovation, I spend these resources and I can draw another card from this deck. It's random, so I don't know what I'm going to get, but I have a chance to get drums, which then I can use to build a rawhide drum on here, if I get it. Um, but one thing I noticed, though, is that as I get an innovation, for example, if I was to get, uh, in this case, family, uh, it adds, it says add family consequences to the innovation deck. And so I'll get more cards that I can have access to. And that's good because it advances the technology I can get to, but on the other hand, it also reduces the chance of me drawing, you know, any one card individually. So it's kind of a nice little trade-off like that. There's a little bit of luck involved in getting the ones you want, but overall I think it's a really interesting way to do kind of like a tech tree system in the game. And then this is the current deck that our settlement has right now. It's still small, and I actually unlocked the... We did, we did do an innovation, and we got the Hovel innovation, which is why we have family on here now as well. So there's that. Uh, now we'll get into the miniatures and show off a little bit of those guys. All right, so the first thing we'll go over is the first four starting survivors. As you can see here, they're lined up. I have them assembled in a rough shape. They're not primed or painted yet. Um, and I just have them kind of tacked to the... Uh, I have them like blue tacked to the to the bases here because I want to play with them this weekend. Um, so they're still in a very intro or starting, you know, condition. Uh, I haven't done too much with them. Um, let's see, yeah, you. So, but so the the start drivers come on. Here's the base insert here. It says it's got the you know the I love poots uh, uh, emblem on the bottom. And then it has an insert I decided to use for the starting survivors, the stone face inserts that we got from the Kickstarter. They're super nice and creepy. Uh, lots of little weirdness. Um, it's a little tough to put these guys on there, which I'm not sure about how I want to do it yet. But uh, that's that. And then I just tack the guys on top for now for use in my game. Um, I, I did put a little bit of green stuff on these guys because, uh, you know, there's a couple of lines and gaps I'm trying to cover up as I go. Like this one here, she's got, you know, things around the back, and then there's a gap around, like, down the side of her arm that I covered up. Um, let's get a nice close-up on some of these guys here. So give you a nice uh, view of the detail. Uh, you know, here's here's the one survivor here. Uh, she's got, you know, you got the nice little hair bits on here, uh, and you got like even on the on the on the stone shard she's got, you can see like, you know, like a little bit of the lines of the face on there. That's a really nice, super nice attention to detail that I really appreciate in these miniatures. Um, you know, super nice line, super crisp lines. Uh, there's a little bit of a seam on the side there, but that's not too big of a deal. But, um, but yeah, and on this one specifically, I, so I had to add a lot, of, a little bit of um, green stuff right here because uh, the super, the contact point for super glue was like super, uh, super tiny that it was able to easily break off. So I wrapped a lot of, I wrapped it around in green stuff to kind of reinforce the, the, the bond there. Uh, there's a little bit of a line on her shoulder that I, because this goes across straight like that, so I, I smoothed that over. Um, but this was actually really, I, I really like putting these models together. Let's show off this guy. He, I think, is one of the cleaner models I didn't have to do much to. He just had that little bit around his shoulder here, uh, right here. And, uh, you know, he's got the, you know, same really nice detail. 
all around. Nice, you know, like muscular build on the back here. It's really, really, really ref like fine detail stuff. Here. That's what I really liked about this project uh, is just the super nice detail that went into it. Um, all the little facial expressions and hair bits and all that stuff. Here's the other survivor female. Again, you can kind of see like um, on her little shard over here, you got like even a little bit of a facial features on there that really shine through. Um, this sash piece kind of went on separately, so that's why I have a little bit of green stuff up here at the top. It doesn't really look too great now, but I think once I prime it and paint it, it'll be pretty good looking. Uh, and if it doesn't look good, well, on, admittedly, this is uh, the first time I've used green stuff, so, you know, we'll see how it turns out. Uh, again, there's a little bit of detail on the front there. And then I think this is probably my favorite guy, because he's just so caveman-like and whatever. Just, just very primal looking, just very angry as well. But uh, this guy, he's got a gun, he's got this little sash piece on the side here uh, that we had to glue on. It didn't really feel like it fit anywhere, but that's why I kind of just glued it on the side. I put stuff and green stuff in there to kind of fill the gap. And then, you know, again, reinforce that crease on the back to make it look a little bit more natural. Uh, let's see, there we go. A little bit of a focus bit. Um, but big hulking man guy. I love him. I named him Kronk in my game. Uh, and then, finally, here's the lion. Rawr. And we'll do zoom out a little bit for him. Let me get a little bit detailed over here. There we go. So I'll, I'll pull him back over here. Um, so he had a little bit of a gap over here that I had to fill in the, you know, same on this side. It wasn't this, these weren't too bad, but I wanted to kind of keep them there. Um, the big thing that I had to do was on the back here, there is actually like where these, this leg and this leg come together, there is a pretty large gap in his back, uh, starting from about here and going down. And then that gap continued around in his tail because that had it be put on separately as well. And so that's why I kind of put a whole bunch of green stuff on the back. I'm not sure. I'm a little bit nervous how that'll turn out, but um, especially being the first time I used it. But we'll see. You know, it's my first time doing it. And uh, we'll figure it out. Uh, I'll just have some fun with it. Uh, again, there's a little bit of ridges in the front here, or on the haunches that I had to fill in. And then there's a, there's a ridge along the bottom that you can kind of see in there that I had to uh, fill in as well. But overall, pretty good model. The one that I think, the, aside from the the back gap here, that seemed like it was a little too big for. Um, it seemed weird. I don't know if I was it was wrong or what, if it was just meant to be that way. But the, it was the biggest issue I had. But other than that, I had, I had a little issue with the front, where uh, the face top part and the bottom part go on separately. And if you're a Kickstarter backer, you'll know this. If you put the line together. Um, but if I had put the top part on, the bottom part wouldn't go in that easily. And so I had to put the bottom piece in first. But if I did that, the top piece would go in. But there's a huge, there's a pretty big gap around the side, around the two sides of his face there and here. Uh, so I tried sanding it down and clipping off bits uh, to make uh, it fit a little better. But it never really worked, and so I just decided to smush a bunch of green stuff in there to cover that gap. And, uh, you know, I think it came out all right, because there's now no line between the jaw and, you know, on this side again, there's no line in the jaw, and it looks nice. It's a, His whole face has kind of been smoothed out down there. Um, but yeah, I mean, here's a nice, it, again, there's a lot of fine detail on this fur here. Uh, the face just looks, he looks like a Rottweiler, for God's sake. <laughs> uh, there's a little bit of a ridge here, but I think that'll be fine when I paint it. And then, you know, he's got these big, meaty hands, and, uh, you know. There we go. 
but he has, he has a huge meaty hand right here and he just looks super intimidating uh, now the one thing I'm not sure about is that his his hands and feet right here and back here I don't know if you can see them. there's a line that goes through them a little bit weird I'm not sure it seems like a weird way to do it but I'm not too worried about it yet um, I don't know if you can see it a little bit better from this side. There's a line here, and then on that back foot there. Uh, this is the only arm that didn't that wasn't that was uh, all together. Uh, and then these other ones had that had all the feet had to be glued on as well. So uh, yeah, I'm not sure what I think about them yet. I don't know how it'll come out in paint, but I'm I'm having a lot of fun with this guy. I'm gonna prime him up and try painting him pretty soon here. Well, thanks guys for watching. That's about all I have for now. Um, I, I'm having a lot of fun uh, playing the game as well as putting the minis together. Uh, I can't wait to see it, see how they progress, and I can't wait to see how long I can make it in my settlement. Um, it's a really fun game. Uh, there's a couple. There's I'm already kind of seeing a couple places where I can make shortcuts to like make a cheat sheet, or like an all-in-one, you know, condensed information. Uh, if you like it, let me know in the comments below. Uh, if there's anything else you guys want to me to go into more detail on, uh, let me know that as well. I'd love to kind of keep playing and exploring this game. I'm having a lot of fun with it so far. Um, but yeah, until next time, adios.